USA don't leave ya now. 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 Let's not forget that. In 1989, 
what we had in Negro as chairperson of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Right? Uh, they went to Panama. Right? Uh, humanitarian intervention to remove supposed drug deal. The real truth was that he would not let them have their way through Panama to support the country in Nicaragua. They used experimental weapons on our people in Panama. Talk about bombers and thermal weapons. They killed thousands of Panamanians, including many Afro-Panamanians. Talk about it. That was supposed to be a humanitarian intervention. Talk about it. Remember Iraq, the so-called no-fly zone. Yeah. Was supposed to be a humanitarian intervention. It lasted for ten years. In that time, the infrastructure of Iraq was completely destroyed, and half a million children died as a result. Bad water, no health care, no electricity, no housing. That's the humanitarian intervention of the West. Don't be fooled. And now we have Libya. And we're supposed to have a humanitarian intervention. The establishment of a no-fly zone. But the first thing we notice is not only do they bomb anti-aircraft sites, they start running interference from one side in the Civil War. They start bombing from Benghazi west to a Tripoli, destroying everything in sight. They forget it's a no-fly zone, and they start talking about taking out Gaddafi. That goes way beyond the UN resolution. Now, do not drink the Kool-Aid. The United Nations is not a democratic organization. Definitely not the Security Council. We have five countries in that council who can stop the whole damn thing. What's democratic about that? And not one of them is based in Africa. Don't drink the Kool-Aid, folks. This attack on Libya is an attack on Africa. Libya is in Africa. Some of those black people who were killed in Libya by the opposition are not from other African countries. They're Libyan. There are people that look like you and me who are Libyan. And they've been killed by the thousands. This, unfortunately, folks, don't drink the Kool-Aid. This is Africa. Yes. which couldn't get a foothold in Africa, yes. now trying to establish itself. And just let me finish with one thing. I did a little bit of work in my time on Malcolm X. <clears throat> in the last year of his life, Malcolm traveled throughout Africa. Yes. And he became aware of the full dimensions of imperialism. Yes. He thought it was just the United States, but when he went to France, yes. he couldn't get past the airport. That's right. right? When he went to England, Speaking they asked him to leave. Speaking your megaphone. Right? They asked him to leave. Right? And he began to find out that what? The enemy of the world's people, the enemy of Africans yeah. and Asians throughout the world was not just U.S. imperialism, but it was Western imperialism organized as NATO. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. now, look at this thing. NATO is called the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. It originally was created supposedly to oppose Soviet expansion in Europe, right? The Soviet Union disappeared at the beginning of the 1990s. And now where do we find NATO? All over Eastern Europe. Is that true? Talk about it, brother. Okay. We find it in Central Asia. Talk about it. Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, and what have you. We find it in Afghanistan. And now where do we find NATO? We find NATO in Africa. Right? This is an aggressive, imperialistic alliance of the West. That's right. And it's moving toward world domination. Yes. Now, understand something else. Barack Obama says that the U.S. is now out of the Libyan intervention business. It's been turned over to NATO. <laughs> when did the U.S. not belong to NATO? Did the U.S. not create NATO? When NATO lasts a day, 
without U.S. support? Uh, who has the bulk of the troops in NATO, the US. United States? This is a non sequitur. If NATO's in there, the United States is in there. Right? Now, there's something called full spectrum dominance. Right? Full. That ain't stop me from speaking. I'm just wrong. <laughs> There's something called full spectrum dominance, right? It simply means that since the United States has all this military hardware, more than the rest of the world combined, why not use it to take over the world, right? This was the plan formulated when Bush one was president when Clinton had his two terms, and then when Bush took over. And I want to tell you a little secret. It's still operative under Barack Obama. Right? Look at this administration. Who's in this administration? Clintonites. Right? This is Clinton too. Right? Initiating and continuing Bush two policies. That's Barack Obama. And because he's black, doesn't mean he gets a pass. No. Right? You know the head of Citibank now is black man. The head of American Express. Is a black man, black man. The head of Bank of America is a black man. When Nellie talks about twelve trillion dollars going to the bank, a whole lot of money is going to institutions that are headed by some people who look like us, but they are not us. They don't represent our interests. They represent the interests of the banks, not us. And so we have to call them out. That's great. That's great. That's great. Now, one thing I want to mention to you about Barack Obama. He went to Colombia. He went to Colombia at a time when the divestment campaign against South Africa was at its height. I've asked every student I know. I asked every student who was there at the time. Any of you folks know Barack? from that generation knew Barack at all. Didn't know it, right? In his formative period, he missed out on the historic struggle. Then suddenly later on, after he goes to the corporate training center, Harvard Law School, right? After they place him in their four foundation funded community organization, right? And after they give him a tutor in the form of another corporate lawyer, Michelle Obama, right? He suddenly discovers the black community. What's going on? Right? Is this cat the Manchurian candidate or not? Right? Is it creation of Wall Street or not? Right? His color is not enough to make him one of us. Right? He becomes one of us when he struggles for us, when he bleeds for us, when he's prepared to die for us because we have a high standard. Thank you. Right? Thank you. We have Harry Tubman in our history. We have Frederick Douglass in our history. We have Marcus Garvey in our history when we stand on this corner. Right? We have Malcolm X in our history. We have Dr. King in our history. We have Dougie Carlyle in our history. If he wants to assume the mantle of black leadership, he has to live up to a high standard, the standard that they established. And one thing all of them were. They were anti-Africanist, anti-interventionist, pro-socialist folk. They were not pro-bank. They were not pro-intervention. They were not chumps who couldn't step to people when they were under attack. Now this man is the president and he lets the Tea Party push him around. What's going on? How can he represent us? He doesn't even know how to step the folk. Right? How can he represent us when he compromises with people trying to beat our brains out? How can he be our representative when we have the situations in our community that we have? We are really dying. Right? We're subjects to institutional genocide. And he presides over all of this. 
So we have to call the question. That's why we are here today. We're going to hold that dude accountable. Do not drink the Kool-Aid, brothers and sisters. There's only one, only one person that can free you. And that's you. We're not going to be free because of Obama. He ain't Moses. He's not the Messiah. He's a moderate Republican corporate lawyer. And those are the interests that he represents. That's the alpha and omega of this dude. And if we're going to be free, we can't look to our president of the United States for our liberation. We have to look for ourselves. And we must tell the truth, no matter what the cause. That's why we're here today. Hold Obama accountable. NATO out of Libya. Africa for the Africans at home and abroad. Brothers and sisters, I'm Councilman Charles Barron, a member of the Freedom Party, more than anything else. And we say Obama is wrong. Obama is wrong. U.S. out of Libya. 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 Brothers and sisters, black people didn't vote for Barack Obama for him to bomb our brother Gaddafi in Libya and kill black Africans in Libya. Black people didn't vote for Barack Obama for him to spend $1.2 million on over 161 missiles, $600,000 to launch him, while we're sitting here in Harlem and in East New York and in Bed-Stuy with unemployment, with homelessness. Barack Obama, people voted for you to stand up like a black man and say no to imperialism, That's right. no to exploitative capitalism, yes. no to bombing another African country. Yes. So we're saying to Obama, don't be a punk. Stand up to those who are trying to push you into an imperialistic assault on Libya. Y'all must remember that in Egypt, the masses rose up. Yes. In Egypt, they showed millions of people in the street. Yes. In Libya, you see six or seven so-called rebels around a tank. Yes. One yes. rebel had a guitar on his back, and they asked him, you know, where did you come from? He said, I just got involved in the war two weeks ago. <laughs> Another news agency wanted to find one of the leaders of the rebels, and they went to his house. And they thought that his family would tell them that he's in this field somewhere fighting. He answered the door himself and said that he don't fight on the weekend. So who are these rebels? Who are these rebels? Where did they come from? We must understand how America works, how the CIA works. There may be some legitimate movements in the region for democracy, but the instigation of the American CIA in Libya, we say no. Obama is wrong. U.S. out of Libya. Obama is wrong. U.S. out of Libya. Obama is wrong. U.S. out of Libya. And brothers and sisters, remember this. The African Union, the heads of all the African countries, said to Obama and America, get out of Libya. So who are you listening to? England? 
Italy, France, these white nations cannot come into Africa by way of the Africa man. We say get your military bases out of Africa. We don't want no Africa command in Africa and have an African president bombing an African nation. Obama, you must have lost your mind. Never forget who you are. Black people didn't vote for you so you can kill African people. And listen to this. Y'all remember Somalia, the brothers that's guarding the coast of Somalia, trying to protect their waters. Yes. Now allowing toxic dumping in Somalia, not allowing them to take all of their fishing industry away from them. So they're capturing boats and they're calling them pirates. They're the Coast Guard of Somalia. You know, when you tell black people that they're pirates, they're looking for a little hook on the, on the leg of them and, a, and some kind of parrot on the shoulder and a three-corner hat. These are pirates, they're protecting their waters. No other country in the world, no other country in the world, and all the country's boats were being captured, but only Barack Obama killed Somalians. Only Barack Obama, a black man. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the MOVE organization in Philadelphia. Y'all remember Frank Rizzo, yes. old racist mayor of Philadelphia, tolerated the MOVE organization, all of his little racist cracker years, but yet Wilson no good, or Wilson good, a black mayor, comes into Philadelphia and he bombs MOVE and kills his own people. Barack Obama, nobody was killing the Somalian people because of the capturing of their boats except for Barack Obama. And it takes a black man to bomb Libya and then to come to say that he's not in it anymore. Well, we say Barack Obama is wrong. Black people are not stupid. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. And we're going to make sure that we're going to continue to organize against Barack Obama because he's killing innocent people. How do you bomb innocent people and say they're trying to protect Gaddafi from killing his own people and your missiles killed more people in Libya than Gaddafi ever killed. So we're saying that's hypocrisy. We're saying that we're not going for that. Barack Obama, shame on you. Killing your own people. And for what? For what? What is this really all about? If you want to bomb somebody, Bomb Israel. Right. For killing the Palestinians in Gaza. You want to bomb somebody? Bomb Saudi Arabia. Your buddy. For killing their own people. If we would be bombing people and killing people who killed their own people, then we'd have to bomb America. Because they're killing too much out here. We have to bomb the NYPD. Because they're killing too many people in our communities. They killed Sean Bell. They killed Amadou Diallo. You know they're not really bombing people because they're killing somebody else. This is all about hegemony in the Middle East area. This is all about the protection of Israel. This is all about oil. This is all about profits over people. This is all about greed. So we should say to the people of Harlem, we're not saying to Barack Obama that you have our vote in your pocket because you're black. Because everybody black ain't really black. Blackness is a state of mind. Blackness is not a skin pigmentation. It's a state of mind. And anybody that's out here killing us, we should not support that. And don't be afraid to stand up and say, we don't want to be oppressed by anyone. Black, white, purple, or green. We're against the exploitation of black people in this nation. We're against internalization or externalization of imperialistic policies around the world. And let me tell you something that Elsie did, and this is why I'm through with him. How dare he call up Zuma, the president of South Africa, and tell him not to allow Aristide to come back home to Haiti. That's the last straw for me. If you're going to let this dictator, Duvalier, come back to Haiti and you say nothing, and then the liberator wants
wants to come back to Haiti, and you tell Zuma, the South African president, not to allow him back. Well, America has been on the wrong side of history. In Cuba, they, they supported Batista, a dictator, a murderer. In Chile, they supported Pinochet, a murderer. In Iran, they supported the Sabah police and the Shah of Iran. Murderers. They supported Samosa in Nicaragua. A murderer. They supported Marcos in the Philippines. A murderer. The U.S. has always supported murderers around the world. And now they're going to come talking about some democracy. That's nothing but USA hypocrisy. Obama is wrong. Obama is wrong. And we got to be bold enough and black enough to stand up and say that he is wrong. We would like to invite you on behalf of the December 12th movement and the Freedom Party. We're going to keep the pressure on. So we're all going to be at the U.S. mission on this Friday, the 1st, from 4 to 7 p.m. Let's thank Nellie Bailey for this rally. Give her a big hand clap for being bold enough to come on out and call us out on this. And y'all come on back. Let's keep the pressure on Friday. We're going to take it from Harlem. Let's take him out to the U.S. mission and tell the U.S. mission that we don't want our money going for bombs in Libya. We want our money to go for our babies in Harlem and all over the U.S. So we want you out there this Friday, February of the 1st, April 1st, be in front of the mission, 45th Street and 1st Avenue. Obama is wrong. Obama is wrong. Obama is wrong. Obama is wrong. And make sure you pick up a flyer, one of these flyers, so we can get everybody at the rally. So we're going straight ahead, and you know what? We're going to win. Because there's no permanent oppression. It's all temporary. They may look like they're passing a budget and grinning and skinning, but they're laying the conditions for their defeat. The people are not going to forget what's happening in Albany. They're not going to forget what's happening in City Hall and tell our elected officials that it's time for them to stop being political punks and get out here and fight for the people. It's time for them to say no to Bloomberg and say no to Cuomo and say yes to their people and guard us and fight for our people. Obama is wrong. Thank you very much. Brothers and sisters, let us remember that Obama is wrong, not just about Libya. He is wrong about all of the other theaters of wars that this country is engaged in. He is wrong about the assault against poor and working people here in this country. He is wrong for senior citizens not to get a cost of living increase when in fact the banks received 12 trillion dollars. We have a number of other speakers that are coming up. Um, our next speaker is going to be Etna Baum. She is with the International uh, the ISO, the International Socialist Organization. Give it up for Edna. Uh, hello, it's wonderful to see so many people out here today. I just wanted to say I'm insulted that Obama would come to Harlem, an economically devastated community, for a $30,000 per plate dinner. It's an insult to the working class. It's an insult to people who are losing um, the opportunity for health care, who are unemployed, people who have to struggle day by day to pay for their rent, etc. And it's also an insult to the various people who have struggled abroad that the United States and the U.N. is currently trying to occupy Libya. Um, one of the most beautiful things that I witnessed uh, several, several um, months ago is the fact that the Egyptian people showed us, showed people in the United States what democracy really looks like. Right. The people in Tunisia also showed us what democracy looks like. And they showed us by actual demonstrations, uh, mass mobilization, etc. And so one of the things that we have to do is um, realize that democracy is not voting for a particular person.
innocent and hoping that they will vote in a particular way, but rather taking to the streets like we are today, showing them what it looks like, having these signs, also on what is happening currently in Wisconsin right now. People are actually occupying the state capitol, and they're opposing the austerity measures. In the same way, there are people opposing the austerity measures here in um, New York State, in Albany. They're going to be going tomorrow and on Thursday to show that they protest all of the budget cuts that are happening. Um, and if you want to continue to join in uh, participating in these type of liberation struggles and participating in mass protests, uh, you can definitely um, talk to me afterwards and discuss how we're organizing with the international socialist organization. Also, there's a huge anti-war demonstration that's going to be happening uh, next week on April 9th. I would encourage everyone to come here, I'll go to that demonstration here in New York City, and to discuss, you know, how do we build a large anti-war movement um, here so that tax money can stay in the United in the United States to support working class people, not to support occupations abroad, not to support occupation in Iraq, in Afghanistan, or anywhere else, including Haiti. Um, so we have to also understand that humanitarian intervention does not is not really a humanitarian. In fact, if anything, it further suppresses people from being able to participate in democratic change and to decide for themselves what they want. And so an end to an occupation, end to um, the austerity measures, and liberation for everyone here and abroad. Terrorism, terrorism, all types of terrorism. 
we'll wheat tip out and leave it over here that goes into some of it. And, 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 and Obama receiving millions of dollars from, from the uh, right wing Cuban community in Miami. Uh, Gloria Stefan with Miami, with, with, uh, with Obama, and also Cacarriles. Uh, uh, who was one of the people involved in blowing up a Cuban airliner in 1975 in which 76 people were murdered and uh, it was U.S. Uh, really U.S. agents that carried this out. People trained by the CIA and um, paid for, given the uh, the whereabouts to do the, uh, these things, the information and, and this has been going on for the last 50 years and Obama has picked up the, uh, the baton and run with it. He's kept up the, the terrorism and uh, we are uh, here and uh, we understand the situation with Libya very well. It's, it's really a classic action. It's very much like what, well, what they've tried to do with you for the last 50 years. By infiltrating people, by, by infiltrating equipment, by trying to uh, set up dissident groups, which is exactly what they've done in, in Libya. And it's what they attempted to do, but failed in Venezuela, where, where they uh, uh, did almost exactly the same, it's the same scenario. There were a bunch of people, mostly police, that were murdered uh, people in the streets. The media, being totally anti-Chavez, uh, it brought to rate this as the Chavistas killing protesters. Just like them. And, and, and it was all lies, it all came out a little after. The difference was that the, uh, um, the, the Venezuelan people have more experience with, with the U.S. and its, and its ways, you know. And also the, the uh, military in uh, in Venezuela did not go along with it. They went along with it and the, the top brass did. But then when it went down to, to the uh, or lower rank offices and things and and, and, uh, and the, the millions of people came out at that point and that and that really forced uh, something to bring uh, Chavez back. And so that was one huge, huge victory for us. Now this is the same thing that's going on in, in uh, Libya. Now, uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a sign. <laughs> okay. Oh, and also I have to thank Nelly for this uh, wonderful uh, uh, rally we're having here under really bad conditions and still we haven't gotten the word out to, to the masses of what what they have to know. You know, we have to really work on that. We, we have to keep it up. Uh, there were a lot of mistakes made in the beginning. A lot of people were fooled into, uh, into attacking uh, Gaddafi. Uh, that was a you know a, a classic move by by, by this uh, by this government. Yeah. Okay. Where is Nelly? Getting interviewed. Oh, she's being interviewed. Okay. Huh? Yeah. Okay. You introduce yourself. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good my afternoon. Name, all right. My name is Martin Goodman. I'm a trans worker and a member of Socialist Action. I'm very happy to be here. This is an historic day where people are saying to the White House, to the ruling class in this country, to Wall Street, we will not go along. We will not be passive soldiers. We will oppose occupation, no matter who is carrying it out. That we oppose imperialism. That we oppose the war machine. That we oppose Wall Street. No matter who it is, who's the head of it, at any given time, we are working people and we are not going to not going to go along with what's going on. All right. Now, I want to say a few things about the policy now. Barack Obama has gone to the United Nations. And what is the United Nations? It's a gang of thieves, like someone once said. The United Nations has consistently ignored the human rights violations.
nations against the Palestinian people. What are they talking about when they talk about humanitarian uh, intervention? For more than 50 years, the Palestinians have been brutalized and occupied. And what has the United Nations done? Virtually nothing. Virtually nothing. I'd like people to remember it was only a year or so ago when the earthquake hit in Haiti. What was the reaction of the United States and Obama? A military occupation during a horrible tragedy. They brought in thousands of soldiers, occupation soldiers, that are hated by the Haitian people. And now, after a year and a half, there's only been a tiny percentage of aid that has gone to the Haitian people. The U.S. in Africa, many, many CIA hits, many coups in Africa sponsored by the United States. It will never change unless capitalism is done with and we have a working people's government here in the United States. Patrice Lumumba, who people say was the liberator of the Congo, was killed by a CIA agent who bragged that he had Lumumba's body in the back of his car. More recently, Rwanda, the person who represents Obama at the United Nations, was Clinton's representative in Africa where they refused to do anything of substance for against the slaughters that were going on there. There's a huge article about that in Atlantic Magazine a few years ago. The rep's name is Rice, and now she's representing Obama at the United Nations. More recently, also, Honduras, where the U.S. was supporting a coup in Honduras. Where did they get off with this stuff about democracy, promoting democracy? Where? When? I would like to just wind up by saying that it doesn't matter what color you are. If you are representing Wall Street, you must carry out the Wall Street agenda. And that has been the history of Barack Obama's administration. Both economically, he went along with the, the bailout under Bush. He had his own bailout in the banks. And now he's cutting uh, the wages of federal workers. And state. And state, Cuomo, and Obama, and the Republicans are all joining hands with Wall Street to attack working people. Only yesterday, Cuomo passed this horrible budget which will mean layoffs, most likely, in the public sector. Thousands of working people, many of them, I'm sure, come from this community. And when you consider, I'm a public worker myself, and I know that I'm not going to get a better job than what I got now, the transit workers. There are a lot of people that are working people that got those jobs, that need those jobs to have any kind of decent standard of living. I'm just going to wind up with one thing. I would ask everyone to do what they can to get uh, your friends to the big April 9th anti-war demonstration in Union Square. There's a huge coalition uh, around this protest sponsored by the United National Anti-War Committee. We have over 500 endorsers, and it's growing every day. We have three unions, I'm proud to say, that are supporting the April 9th demonstration. Uh, SEIU 1199, Transport Workers Local 100, this is my, these are my guys, and Teamsters 808. And we're going to have a big, broad demonstration around principal demands, which include U.S. out now, U.S. bring the troops home now, and that we end the war on the Middle East and on Libya and end the war on the working people 
here in the United States. So I'd ask everybody to do their part, take some leaflets, spread the word, put up a leaflet at your work, and let's get out there April 9th. Thank you. so that you can hear. I have a lot of information about Libya. I was fortunate enough to go there in October of 2009. Can, can people hear me? Hello, can people hear me? In 2000, I was headed by Cynthia McKinney, the former congressional representative from Georgia. And while I was in Libya, I learned a lot of things that people in the United States do not know about Libya. Starting with this. Everyone has a home. Housing is an entitlement to the people of Libya. And the homes are nice homes. The oil revenue that comes to the country from the corporations that buy the oil is distributed to the people of Libya on a monthly basis. Every household gets a check for between two and three thousand dollars from the government. Consider that they have practically free housing, they have free health care, and free education, things that we do not have here in the United States. The, pre the president, former president of South Africa, Nelson Mandela, called Muammar Gaddafi a hero. He said that Gaddafi and the Libyan people, out of all of the people of the world, outside of South Africa, were most responsible for the defeat of apartheid in South Africa. And when he wanted to go visit Muammar Gaddafi in 1997, Bill Clinton, the guy that used to work up here, tried to stop him. He called Mandela twice and told him, do not go. And Mandela said, I am a moral person. Gaddafi did all of this for us. Well, you were backing the side of apartheid, and I'm going. And in 1997, Muammar Gaddafi and President Nelson Mandela put their arms up and their fists up, standing in front of the building that the President of the United States in 1986, Ronald Reagan, bombed, killing Gaddafi's child. This past week, or a week and a half ago now, the Clintons were still involved. Bill Clinton is now the Viceroy of Haiti. The money, the aid money that was sent to Haiti that still hasn't reached the people of Haiti who are starving and in dire straits, dying of disease, is in Bill Clinton's hands. The nonprofit array that handles that money is governed by him. And he and his wife Hillary Clinton, the Secretary of State, and President Barack Obama called the President of South Africa and said, "Do not allow Mandela, do not allow Aristide to go back to Haiti." The same day that Aristide was finally allowed to leave South Africa, which owes its freedom to the people of Libya, voted to allow the United States to invade Libya and bomb it. And the Clintons were at the heart of it. That guy, right up there. I just want to, I want to give one more piece of information about what's been going on. Two more. First of all, the Pakistan Observer reported in the third week of February that U.S. troops had already landed in Benghazi, that there was an amphibious team that came in and brought weapons and were training the so-called rebels there. That's the first piece of information. The second is that the Russian government issued a statement also in the third week of February when the United States was claiming that the Libyan Air Force was bombing civilians, saying we have been monitoring with satellite surveillance the events in Libya, and there have been no aerial military actions taken whatsoever. And they continued to issue statements up until two weeks ago. So the foundation of this invasion is a lie. And the reason for it is control of Africa. AFRICOM was established in October of 2008. That's one month before Barack Obama was elected president. No country in Africa would allow it to base itself there, so it's being run from Stuttgart in Germany. One wonders if they're set up in Rommel's old headquarters from where he ran North Africa back in the 1940s. But what's at stake is whether or not Africa is going to have the right to self-determination that just about every other continent on this planet has. And the United States is on one side, and Muammar Gaddafi, who has been the largest supporter of pan-African institutions 
on the continent is on the other, and that's why we're invading uh, uh, Libya right now, and Barack Obama has his hands on the switch. So you'll have to wonder whose side he's on. Thank you.
guest. This is my time. But what do you think our opportunity is going to say? We have two kind of guests today. One guy, if you want to see him, you have to pay the more than thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> you, we have over here the real Harlem. We are talking about the peace. We are talking about the real problem of the humans. Doesn't matter where you from. You from Africa, Pakistan, Asia, Arab, Haiti. No, we all human. We have one thing is common. Peace is our responsibility. Peace is our responsibility. And being a conscious human being, we will put, we will do everything from this New York. We will stand against the bigotry. We will stand against the racism. We will stand against the war. War is the only enemy at this moment. We should have to be united. And the, doesn't matter what kind of color who is in a white house. If he is a whole hundred percent black and white, or the half and half. This guy, Mr. Obama, he give us a favor. If you cannot, if you cannot take the peace flag, please leave us alone. To give us some favor, give us this country favor. We know how to deal with the white guys because we know long time how to deal with them. But please, please, Mr. Obama, if you cannot do. Right job, and if you want to do the same way, like before, Condoleezza Rice doing one thing, like an old, old maid service to the white guys. We don't need more. We don't need anyone from Mr. Gonzalez. We don't need no more Condoleezza Rice kind of people. No, and we don't need any one. other Miss Rice, who's in no, United no, Nations, no. getting a resolution, burning the civilians. And then they said that they don't have any report, no. I'm Pakistani, I know what's happening in my country by the drone attacks. By the drone attacks. You don't have the courage to come to the man to man, face to face. Thousand by the way, just like Israeli, and Palestinian against the Palestinians, just like Indian against the Kashmiris. And now, these all white big forces, all NATO, they are going against the humanity. Sisters and brothers, my friends, ladies and gentlemen, let's show that Mr. Obama from this Harlem, we don't care any color. No. We need only a human government. And Mr. Obama, you will live in our heart when you talk about the heart and the human. Humanity, civility. But you are the lawyer. When the CIA murderer killed the two Pakistanis, you came to the international front and the camera and you said that he is a diplomat. No more. He was the murderer. He was against the Sharia law. And now you pay the Sharia money to the Pakistani mother and sister. And you give them the visa to come down over here. And you kick in the immigrants from here. But when the one CIA guy, murderer, you can do anything. So Mr. Obama, please, you have another time. You have more time to tell us and show the world that what's the difference between a white guy and black guy. Even if you are half and half. Talk about the peace. Bring the troops home. Yes. Offer the money for the schools. No blood for oil. This whole area, if you go over there, ask them what they need. They don't need any war. They need the schools. They need the dignity and the respect. And respect come with education. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, Nelly. about Troy Anthony Davis. Uh, some of you probably know that the Supreme Court refused to uh, give him a hearing, and so we have to really uh, be uh, especially uh, active and put pressure on the Georgia authorities to either pardon or give clemency to Troy Anthony Davis or uh, to the parole board to give him parole. Uh, also, uh, use, uh, participate in many of these tax the rich demonstrations here and in Albany. We got to become Wisconsin. Very good, very good. Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that we have a sound permit for this area. We can march where we want. And so after a couple of more speakers, we're going to fold up tent here, and we're going to head east, and we're going to see what's going on, because maybe we can raise enough voice and noise without a microphone.
Mexico. So we ask that you be very brief, Suzanne Ross. Turn it up a little bit. It's down. It's all, it's all the way up, I thought. Oh, is that right? Hello? Okay. Well, we got to hurry up. Okay. Okay, everybody can hear me. I am really glad that the protests against Obama, this warmonger, this anti-human rights, supporter of torture, of tortures around the world, that this kind of protest is beginning. And this is the kind of movement we need to build that takes all these issues into account. Into account. So, I happen to have visited Mubia with Jamal last week, last Thursday. He talked endlessly about the sellout of Obama. Endlessly. He's doing an analysis. Talk. If you read his columns, heard his messages, he's outraged by what Obama's doing. And we are outraged because not only is Obama continuing to support the rotten policies internationally and domestically of his predecessors, those so-called reactionaries, but for two years we've been trying to meet with the first black head of the Justice Department, Attorney General Eric Holder. He knows, Obama knows, they're both very, very well-educated constitutional lawyers. They know that Mumia never had a fair trial. They know that 30 years after the original conviction that it's time to free him. And yet they have refused to meet with us for two full years. So we're glad to escalate the struggle. We're here as part of building an anti
Not what the one percent of this country has. Yes. If you are a wealthy, a rich politician like Bloomberg, the wealthiest man in New York City, when he came into office, he was the third or fourth richest person in the city. Now, into his second term, he is the first richest person here in the city of New York. We don't live in a democracy. No, we do not. Does that give the right of any country to rain bombs on us? No. Does it give them that right? No. What gives the U.S. government the right to bomb the home of Muammar Gaddafi? That is the the. That is not this country's right because they don't like what's going on and they're going to be selective, selective about what democracy and the lack of democracy and what dictatorship they will go after. Not millions of dollars, but billions of dollars into a seaside resort in Egypt. He wasn't chased into a foxhole as if he was an animal like Saddam Hussein. It doesn't matter what you think of him. But what gives this country the right for regime change at their whim? What gives this country the right? And we have the right to be here. I've no doubt that in the coming weeks, my poor little organization, the Harlem Tenant Council, will be under the scrutiny of every governmental agency there is. Because here in this democracy, if you dare stand up, then you become a target of the government. Is this what democracy looks like? No. This isn't what democracy looks like. Remember when President Obama was in the Middle East? He got on a platform and said that this was the dawning of a new day in his administration. He distanced himself from George W. Bush. Well, we know now that he is another George W. Bush. That's who he is. Black men and Latino men continue to crowd into the prisons all over this country, as they did under Bush, as they did under Clinton. The economic condition, the economic condition and the crisis that has gripped black America, that even forced the spineless, the spineless, urbanly and man jealous and others, including Reverend R. Al Sharpton, who is on the payroll of every rich white man in New York City. From Bloomberg on 
and Susan Bryce okay, I was and Clarence Thomas. That is why the hedge funds are paying him millions of dollars. We have a couple of uh, speakers and we want you to hear about what's going on in Latin America. And I'm honored to present my good friend, Wellington. I'm working with the Latin American and uh, Caribbean community. And I'm condemning this invasion in Libya. And I think that what the uh, United States is doing now is totally for oil. And you know that. We need to stop this war. We need to be united. We need to all work and unite and asking Obama to stop this war now. We need him to stop this. We need money for jobs, not for war. We need, we know that this invasion in Libya right now is also plans that they have for Latin America. And they're going to go for Latin America too. But we need to get together and we need to say no more wars. We need to stop this now. We need to tell him that we need our tax money to invest it over here. Here we need jobs. We need schools. We need social service. We don't need to spend money in wars. We don't need to go out there and invade another country.